YouTube is it going the goat house is back with one player that each NFL team must cut this offseason gonna go through team by team and break this down and I think people make the mistake sometimes of just expecting maybe the worst player from the team or a player that just played really bad this year uh, but there's more factors uh, to come up which player I, I think is the the most important actually to cut on each team so we'll break that all down here in just a second before we get started we have a 40k subscriber go on both of our channels we have a newer channel the goat house plus there's a link in the description and the comments for that please subscribe to that we would really appreciate it and follow our twitter at goat house nfl there's a link down there below as well Every single day talking football, whether it's live during games, whether it's about breaking news or NFL draft, uh, you know, scouting reports or rankings or anything. Uh, so must follow there and our Patreon link you'll find down below as well. Um, we'll go team by team here. We'll start with the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to say Robert Alford is going to be the most important player to cut on their team. They don't really have a whole bunch of options to cut. You know, there, there are a few players that, uh, you know, will save a little bit of money, but Alford's not really, you know, a veteran corner, not really part of their plans going forward with this young team. Uh, obviously was injured this year, but it's not necessary to keep him around. And you cut him, you save four and a half million. You know, not a huge number there, um, but to me, it's just unnecessary to keep him around. You, you save that money, and it'll help you in free agency and even in the draft. You know, a draft class, a full draft class, you know, costs a little over four point five million in cap space. So it does help you out there. Um, but overall, yeah, the Cardinals really aren't overpaying anybody besides David Johnson. Da if they cut David Johnson. Uh, that would actually result in uh, you know negative cap cap loss, uh, so they will look to trade David Johnson uh, this offseason. I'm going to go team by team in a full plan, in my opinion, throughout the offseason. So we'll cover kind of more players, what they should do, who they should bring in, uh, what their draft plan could look like. So I got them cutting Robert Elford here in this video, four and a half million. Uh, next team is the Falcons. They have a couple options. You know, the the situation with the Falcons, you know, is that they, you know, yeah, there is a few options they could cut. They probably should cut because they're a little short on cap space. Uh, but, uh, you know, the problem is that a lot of these players don't have a big number in terms of how much they're going to save, but it'll add up. You know, you start to talk about maybe a guy like Desmond Trufant, but to me, um, you know, you don't save, you save around this, the same here, almost $5 million. To me, it's not really worth it. It's still a decent corner. A guy like Devontae Freeman, I think they need to start to think about replacing him. But you only save, you know, around this, you know, maybe $4 million. Uh, So I want Allen Bailey, a guy they brought in from Kansas City and just has not been able to get on the field. Very disappointing. And, and there's really no way he's earned his stay uh, when there's $4.5 million on the line this year. And every... Every penny counts for the Falcons, so I think this is an obvious cut. It's a must cut. Uh, some of these teams here won't have that obvious or must cut really, but the Falcons do. They have a couple, but I want Allen Bailey here. It's 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 a must cut, uh, obvious one and a must cut. Four and a half million will will be huge for them in terms of their cap situation. Uh, next team is the Baltimore Ravens, and it's a tricky one. I, I love what the I love the Ravens situation. They got a decent amount of cap for having a number of good players. Uh, they don't really have any bad contracts, so there really isn't a true must cut. Cut is the key word here. Uh, technically, they will cut Brandon Carr, but really uh, it's it's an option that they're going to decline. It's a team option. So by doing that, they will cut their, uh, Brandon Carr excuse me, and um, – Free six million, which is quite a bit of money. Uh, veteran corner, really good career, still plays a, a huge role for the Ravens, really. Um, but they do have a number of corners. You know, Jimmy Smith is a free agent, but they do have a number of young guys to step up. Uh, you know, at this time, behind guys uh, like Marcus Peters and, and uh, Marlon Humphrey. You know, it was a great trade for Marcus Peters. They did that for a reason. So Brandon Carr. Uh, they will decline his option. He will be cut six million dollars to save. That's a good amount of money there going into the free agency. And then they have like their decision making with guys like Matthew Judon. Um, so, and you know that you know about six million, give or you know six to eight million is you know generally how much you need for for a draft. And I know they already have enough for the draft, but it, it's you know a small number. You know six million dollars a lot, but it looks like a small number. It's actually a lot bigger than you think, you know, because they, you can use a whole draft class on that. Uh, so they will, I think they will decline that option, uh, and resulting in Brandon Carr being cut, let go, because they have young, you know, they got guys like 
Averitt, and they drafted Marshall last year, and those are just rotation guys behind their their studs who start at the position. And we'll see what they do with Jimmy Smith as well. I, I believe he'll go somewhere else, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about all that this offseason. The Bills, Bills are next. It's a tricky one here, uh, and this really isn't a a you know must or obvious cut. Uh, but if I had to pick somebody here, it would be Trent Murphy, and I would actually strongly consider this. You know, he's a solid pass rusher. He's a solid pass rusher. Um, you know, he gets pressure. He's not really, you know, he doesn't have the athleticism. You know, he's pretty much just running by the quarterback a lot of times, just you know, providing some pressure. Um, but you do save eight million. Is it worth? Is it worth keeping him with eight million? And I know some Bills fans will be like, you know, he's 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 still a solid player. We would like him. You know, he just got here last year, and all that could be true. Uh, but this is kind of the case where you cannot be afraid to get better. The Buffalo Bills already have a lot of cap space, but they want to be comfortable with that cap space. And this is a great year to have the cap space, especially when you need pass rushers. With Trent Murphy in there, with Jerry Hughes in there, you need pass rushers badly. You might need two new starters. I do like Jerry Jerry Hughes, but you want to be able to be the best you can be. You cannot be afraid to get better. That Bills defense will be, it was not elite last year. It was great. It was not elite. It will be elite beyond elites if it has pass rushers. As good as they were, they didn't have a great pass rush. So you cut Murphy. There's no reason to keep him around $8 million for a rotation pass rusher. You spend big on free agency in the pass rushers, you know, very good high-end quality starters, a long list of guys. Again, we'll break down team by team what I think teams should do this offseason with cuts and who they should go after. Um, there's a long list of guys they should, and they save that at $8 million. It's om- They're almost at the point where it's okay if they overspend on some of those pass rushers a little bit, you know, as long as they get better. Um, you know, you don't want to do it by an, a, tr- a tremendous amount. But uh, So this is a tough one because Murphy's still a pretty good player, um, but... Saving $8 million is pretty big, and you don't want to have, you know, option A, best case scenario for this defense is he's a rotation guy, but do you you spend $8 million on a rotation guy this year when you're about to spend big in free agency? I don't think so. So, I, I you know, in my opinion, if they feel comfortable about signing some guys in free agency, this, this uh, maybe should be a cut, you know, almost must be a cut. The Panthers are next on Terry Poe is what I went with because a solid player, a solid nose tackle, um, which they may create a hole if they got got rid of him, but ten million, ten million is, is a lot. The Panthers, for being in a rebuild stage, you know, it's not going to be a long rebuild stage, you know, with, with the guys they brought in, um, you know, but they're in that rebuild process still. They're going to change some things around. Uh, you would think they would have more cap space available, and if they trade Cam Newton, obviously they will. Um, but cutting Don Terry Poe saves a lot. Ten million is a lot for this year. Uh, and they'll look to go younger, younger, more athletic on that uh, on that defense, really everywhere. Um, so I, I think, you know, Don Terry Poe's been solid. Hasn't really been the same since his first couple years. Uh, you know, $10 million is a lot of money. I mean, you can you can get a, a nose tackle, you know, somewhere in the draft for a lot cheaper, maybe even in free agency, or maybe you want to get better and spend more. Um, but $10 million is a lot of money. Uh, we're on to the Bears next. Bears a tough one. What about Prince of Mucamaro, though? It's kind of tough because he played pretty well. You know, not this season, but last season, saving nine million is pretty big, though. Pretty big, especially when they have a guy like Kevin Tolliver uh, stepping up. I actually like Tolliver a lot. We we saw him get an, an opportunity against, uh, you know, a few times this year, but against the Cowboys, you know, looked pretty impressive. And uh, I was pretty high on him coming out of LSU. I actually had a second round grade on him. He uh, dropped out of the. You did not get drafted and went undrafted, signed with Chicago because of off the field issues. So we know the talent is there. Uh, I think he could step up opposite of Fuller. And uh, yeah, they brought in Roberson from the CFL, who could be a solid rotation guy. Um, but yeah, cut a Mukamara, $9 million. Another reason why this is tough is because you know, they do have Leonard Floyd, who's been very, very underwhelming. And if they cut him, they save a good amount of money, you know, well in the double digits, you know, north of $13 million. Um, so that is an option as well because you definitely need to get better in the uh, in the opposite spot there, you know, opposite of Klomac, I should say, uh, to get him more help. You know, that will increase his production. You know, Floyd is still, a, I say, a solid young player, good in run game. He he needs to get after the quarterback more. That's the obvious part. I don't know if they caught him because pass rush rotation is uh, pretty key, and I still think they you know believe in him, even though they're going to be looking for a starter next to Max. So I don't know if they cut Floyd. That's kind of a 
you know, a borderline guy. You know, they're going to cut obvious ones like Adam Shaheen. Uh, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be a whopping number in terms of how much you save. Um, but yeah, Prince Mukamara can save you nine million. It is tough because he was pretty darn good just a year ago. This year, a little off. Um, so I expect them to do that nine million, save it, uh, and then use that on free agency. You know, when free agency, you look for another pass rusher. You can look for a tight end. You can look for uh, another quarterback. So we'll see there. Uh, the Bengals, very very obvious one. I definitely expect them to do this. Andy Dalton. Uh, will be out. Their first overall pick will be in, expected to be Joe Burrow. Uh, no reason to keep Andy Dalton around as a backup for $17.7 million. Um, that's a lot of money. It makes his contract look bad, but there's a good thing. You're, you're able to cut him now while gaining $17.7 million in cap. There's all these types of players, all these big-time players, or supposed to be big-time players, uh, around uh, that you can't really cut because you go in the negative. You, you get a cap loss, so um, the way Andy Dalton's contract was uh, structured ends up being pretty solid uh, come 2020 because you can cut him and save that 17 points. It's an obvious one here, ladies and gentlemen. It's 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 going to happen, uh, and and that's big time for them. You know, get you know people know Joe Burrow's coming in could make Cincinnati a little appealing. You got the cap for free agency. You got some good young studs there. Um, you know you know beef up the offensive line a little more. Get A.J. Green back if that's what you want to do. I'm a little worried about him staying healthy. We'll break that all down in, in the Bengals offseason video coming up here in the near, near future for every single team. Uh, but, yeah, obvious one there. Uh, the Browns, tricky. This, you know, it's a, this is a sneaky cut, I'd say. And I know some people won't agree with me on this one because they just traded for Olivier Vernon um, just a year ago. and But $15.5 million. When there's that much money to be saved, you really have to sit down and and determine if it's worth keeping that player. Is he worth $15.5 million? I don't even need to sit down yet. He's not worth that money. Uh, I'm cutting him, no question. Um, you're fine. You're, tra- you're trying to find that you know, future pass rusher anyways. He's not the future pass rusher. Even if they keep him, they know he's not. You're trying to find that future opposite of Miles Garrett. This is a lot of money, and he is not. He has not been playing you know, well. I think you know he could pick it up a little bit, I guess, second year on the Cleveland Browns, but uh, I caught him. I saved fifteen and a half million. Uh, they got Stefanski in there. You know, not in love with that hire, but I think he's a likable guy. You know, people seem to like him, uh, and, and you know, it's still an appealing place with some of the players there. I know maybe the league will be split if it's an appealing place or not. But you could spend your money, get the offensive lineman, get that. You know, go to the draft. Uh, you know, get that. The offensive line class is pretty good in the draft too. You'll find that other pass rusher. I mean, you can go big in free agency on that too. There's a lot of good. Um, you know, guys like Shaq Barrett. You know, you you can spend big money for that. Um, you know, instead of giving 15 and a half million, uh, or taking that hit and cap room for this offseason for Olivier Vernon. You know, to me, people will disagree. To me, it's an it should be an obvious and must. But will they do it? That's the question. Cowboys, the next one. Tyrone Crawford is what I got. Uh, another, you know, another tricky one, I guess. You know, save eight million. Eight million is a lot. Uh, you know, this guy was hurt this year, labrum injury, uh, and ended up being way worse than they expected. Um, you know, pretty solid a year ago. Not this past year, a, year, a previous year. Pretty solid. So that's why it's tough because they they kind of need the interior D lineman. Crawford's pretty solid. Um, you know, it, it's it's tough because he's a solid player, but he had that injury, and we don't know if he's going to be the same. It's tough cutting guys when they're hurt. You know, it, it sucks. But uh, I save the $8 million. To me, it's not worth keeping them around for that $8 million. Uh, the Cowboys have a lot of cap. This is the tricky part about the Cowboys. They have a lot of cap. But go look at their free agents. Long list of free agents and a long list of big-time ones. Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, um, you know Byron Jones. That's just some. So basically, they have a lot of cap, but they're going to have to use that cap on their own players, their own players. So basically, the way it looks now is, at best, they may be the same team on paper as last year. I know they you expect them to improve a bit because their coaching changes, but every single team, even the two teams remaining, the Chiefs and the Niners, um, you know, going into the Super Bowl here. Maybe you're listening to this after the Super Bowl, but my point is, those two teams they even need to get better, and they know that this offseason. You do not want to go in with basically the same team, you know, in the next year. Every year is new. You know, you do not want to be the same team. So they're gonna have to spend their cap space on their same guys, and they may even miss out on a guy like Byron Jones at the same time. Um, so you need to cut what you can here. Eight million is a lot. Save up some space to get your guys and some because they do have a decent amount of cap. So, um, Cowboys are a team to look out for this offseason. It's it's a very interesting team going going forward here. 
Uh, the Broncos are next. Joe Flacco, the obvious one. Um, and it kind of makes the trade look a, a little less bad. It's still bad. It, it looks better, I guess, uh, because you can cut him and save $10 million. So it's not like you're going to lose out a ton of money here. You cut him, you save $10 million. Drew Locke's the guy. Uh, you know, Brandon Allen could be the backup. I'm good with that. Uh, you save $10 million here. They, the Broncos actually have quite a few free agents. Um, their D line is pretty solid, but they got quite a few on the D line that are free agents. They have Justin Simmons, the big time safety uh, for the Denver Broncos. You know, definitely a safety on the rise, one of the better ones in football. I mean, he's going to want a lot of money. You maybe franchise tag somebody there. Um, you know, Shelby Harris played big time this year. You got to spend money this year on your own guys. And this is a team where, yeah, you definitely want to get your own guys back because it's a young, improving team. So really, they won't really be the same team. They'll, they should get better, but you also want to bring in some new faces as well. Uh, no brainer. You cut Joe Flacco, you save $10 million. Lions next. Uh, another tough one because Rick Wagner uh, was a solid offensive lineman. It just feels like yesterday, but off year, off year this year. Um, you know, not so hot last year as well. Six million isn't a lot. That's why they really got to sit down and and decide if this is worth it because it's hard to come across these offensive linemen these days. Um, but they're in pretty good position in the draft to uh, kind of pick themselves back up with some really good day one starter offensive tackles. Um, so six million, I do this. You know, he ain't the same anymore. Um, it, the Lions are you know another one of those very interesting teams because they do have some holes. Um, but you have Matt Stafford, who maybe was playing his best ball before he got hurt, but then, again, he's hurt. So what's the decision you do here? Do you go for the wins next year? It's going to be tough. You know, they, I like Stafford. I like their weapons. You know, I like Kenny Galladay a lot. Um, but can you really win something? It almost feels like they're kind of borderline. Should we, should we go for wins next year? Should we go in the rebuild mode? It's an interesting team here. Um, so I'd cut Wagner. I'd save the $6 million. Uh, I'd I'd go young. I, I'd go young here. So... Other than that, though, kind of the good news, the Lions really don't have – I mean, we got to see what Snacks decides to do. He may retire. He may not. You know, if they – you know, you could cut him and save some money as well. So that's a, a tough uh, decision there. Um, but the good news is the Lions don't really have any bad contracts. Like, there's really no other options here to cut. So that's kind of the, kind of the good news there. It's There's not a whole bunch of must-cuts for them at all, really. Uh, the Packers are next, uh, and Jimmy Graham is what I went with here. And I don't know if they do this. That's kind of that's kind of one of the ones where I don't know if they actually do this. Um, you know, they seem to kind of insist on Jimmy Graham. Um, he started to pick it up. You know, I guess late a little bit. He has really no interest in blocking. Um, looks like he doesn't really try. That's kind of been going on for some time now. Uh, you know, he's still Jimmy Graham though. He's still somewhat of a threat. But you draft Sternberger last year. I, you know, I think you can get another one to replace Jimmy Graham. Uh, you know, kind of fill in right there behind Sternberger if you like him going forward. Uh, you cut him, you save $8 million. You know, the Packers do want, they want receivers, you know, multiple receivers. They may need to find the right tackle of the future. You need inside linebackers. Um, you know, you need defensive linemen other than Kenny Clark, who's at the nose tackle. So, you know, the Packers made it the NFC Championship game. Uh, they know they're right there getting the Super Bowl. They know they need to get better. They know the spots they need to get better. So, I think this is really a must. It's... They should do it. We'll see if they do. That's $8 million. That's a lot of money there. Texans next. Vernon, obvious. Obvious. Guarantee here. Vernon, well, I guess you never know what Bill O'Brien being the GM. But Vernon Hargraves, they brought in, um, you know, low risk play. I, you know, I kind of like the play. You know, they bring him in off waivers. They pay him for the rest of this year. Kind of help them make that run because they they knew they were in the ability to make the run. Obviously, Hargraves ain't going to put you over the hump, but it's better to try it. It's worth the risk. And now going into this year, do you pay him the $10 million? No, you don't. You cut him. You save $10 million. Um, you got some young corners that'll step up. You probably draft another one. Um, you don't need Hargraves for, you know, with $10 million on the line there. You just don't. I expect this one to happen 100%. Uh, the Colts, uh, Brian Hoyer, you know, it, $5 million you can save on cutting Brian Hoyer. To me, that's a that's a no-brainer. I mean, um, you know, great career for Brian Hoyer. I don't know about great. You know, he, he lasted a long time. He was a solid rotation quarterback or backup quarterback, I guess. Um, but... Colts are interesting too because Jacoby Brissett. If you cut him, you save quite a bit. You know, around nine million. Top of my head, if I can, you know, if I'm thinking that right. Um, but I don't think they cut Jacoby Brissett. That's tough to do. But they want to get better at the quarterback position. Uh, but they still like Brissett for the future. I think they cut Hoyer. I think they have Brissett. I think they bring in somebody else. 
Um, whether it's, you know, we got the Tom Brady talk, you know, whether it's something like that or you look to free uh, the draft, excuse me, look at guys like Jordan Love if you want to trade out for Herbert. Um, you know, you can sit here and list off guys, but those are the guys that come off the top of my head here. Um, you know, I think I believe they could like a guy like Jordan Love. Uh, so you cut Hoyer. Basically, what I'm getting at is you have Brissett, another quarterback. You don't need Hoyer, especially for five million. You don't need it. He had to come in uh, at one point in the season. Brissett was hurt, and there were games that you expect the Colts to win no matter who the quarterback was, and they couldn't really get it done. So there's really no reason to keep him around. Five million is a lot for a backup quarterback. You know, especially when you can. You know, if you're desperate for a, if you want to go Brissett starting quarterback next year, and then you're desperate for a backup, then I mean, you can go you know later in the draft and get a guy uh, to be your backup. You know, Anthony Gordon, you know, somebody like that that's going to be uh, you know a lot cheaper. So uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. Jacoby Brissett brings up an interesting topic. I don't think they should or will cut him, but it's interesting to think about because again, yeah, do they want to pay Brissett? I guess a round starter money to be a backup. You know. I think they do because he's a guy that can come back in the future and be the starter. Um, I guess we'll see. Pretty interesting. I'm thinking of now. You know, Tom Brady's kind of been linked to the Colts, and they have here. They, <clears throat> here they have Brian Hoyer, former Patriot, and they have Jacoby Brissett, who they got from the Patriots. I thought that's pretty interesting, actually. So you know, hard, still hard to see Tom Brady leaving New England, but Colts would be have to be that top spot there. Uh, the Colts do have a whopping number in cap space, so that's good. They do have to re-sign some guys like Anthony Costanzo's one that comes to mind. It's a must re-sign, so we'll see. I think Hoyer's an obvious one, though. Uh, Jacksonville, very obvious one. Marcel Darius, $20 million. This is good news for the Jaguars fans. This is good news for the Jags right here. Um, obviously, you already have a hole at defense line. You know, Hopefully, a guy like Tavon Bryant can step up. I thought he was going to be go be a 3-4 end, so he's kind of trying to play that D-tackle, that 3 technique uh, in the 4-3 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, hopefully he can step up, but either way, you need D-tackles. You need interior. The Jags are pretty rough up the middle. Uh, on top of that, Marcel Darius is nowhere near what he used to be. He's just not playing the same. He's not highly productive. He's basically a big body to stop the run. He's solid at stopping the run. Uh, $20 million, that is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Uh, it's a lot of cap space. You, you cut him without even thinking about it. You cut him, and uh, you get some young players to the draft. You have quite a few draft picks, uh, and then you have money for free agency. Uh, people that are going to ask about Nick Foles, um, it's 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 not worth it to cut Nick Foles. You know, it's going to be a cap loss. Um, you know, right around there, you know, probably can make it work where you can gain that money back. But it's uh, it's a guy that you keep or trade. So I know people will ask about that. Twenty million, Marcel Darius. You do it. So I guess the contract was set up pretty – I guess it was smart because at this point where you don't need them anymore, you can save $20 million. So not bad there. Chiefs, crazy one here, Sammy Watkins. People will disagree here, and I'm not saying this is, an, like this is going to happen. Um, $14 million is a lot for a receiver. $14 million is a lot. Uh, I, I actually think they do this. I, I Maybe a restructure. Maybe they restructure with Sammy Watkins. He is still a threat. He fits their offense. He still helps them win. He could very well help them win the Super Bowl. Um, you know, they draft Miko Harmon last year. You can look at this receiver class. That's another point. Look at this receiver class. They can go find a guy that fits and that can make an impact right away later in the draft. Uh, and that's how much cheaper than $14 million. An insane amount. In one year, an insane amount cheaper. And Sammy Watkins really, like I said, he's an impact. He can help them win. He won't really make or break this team, though. You can cut him. You can save the $14 million. You can give Mahomes an extension. You can get your corners. I think they need depth on the offensive line. They need running backs. Um, you know, they have some needs as good as they are. So you save the $14 million, It helps you big time. And, and how do you regain that Sammy Watkins? You go to the draft. You take a guy in the mid to late rounds. And to me, I like Sammy Watkins. I've always liked Sammy Watkins, uh, even though he hasn't lived up to the hype. It's just... It's a smart decision. It's a business decision here. Uh, maybe he wants to restructure, take a pay cut. That would be fantastic. Uh, but $14 million is a lot of money for a receiver like this. That It's not really going to make an impact, but not really going to make or break their team. The Chargers are next. Uh, Thomas Davis. I, I kind of said this. I said it in the video at some point last year. You know, When they signed him, I liked, this, I liked them signing Thomas Davis a lot. And what went into that is because he's still playing at a pretty high level. I thought he fit the defense, but they set the contract up so they're going to cut him in a year, and that's exactly what they're going to do uh, right here. Here we are a year later. They're going to cut him. 
5.25 million they're going to save. He's really up there in age, heck of a career. Uh, it's not necessary to keep him around. You save it's it's a good amount of money there. Um, you know to save by cutting a linebacker. So I, I kind of felt this one coming when they signed him. That's why I kind of liked like the contract. To me, it felt like a one year deal. Um, you know, it really had low risk to it. You know, so I, I expect this to happen. Great career for Thomas Davis, though. You know, it could be coming to an end. Uh, a beast, too. I mean, how many injuries this guy played through where people would set out a whole year, he would get injured, um, and then play, you know, days late, yeah, you I know, mean, a week later is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, good contract the way they set it up there. The Rams, uh, this one I expect them to do. Eric Weddle, uh, not a whopping number there, 4.2. It's a, it's a good amount of money still. It's not just a huge number, though. $4.25 million they save. Um, they drafted Taylor Rapp. I like Taylor Rapp a lot. They like Taylor Rapp a lot. Uh, Eric Weddle got hurt last year. He's still, he's not the same when he, you know, I, I kind of think he was overhyped the last couple of years anyways, you know, just because he's Eric Weddle. He's a, you know, future Hall of Famer, potentially great career. Uh, you know, he's really not the same anymore. There's really no reason to keep him as a back of a four, four point two five million, um, because, you know, they, they got their, they got their starting safeties already over there. And Eric Weddle already came out and said that he has really no interest staying on as a backup because he, he kind of already feels like what's happening because they got Taylor Rapp stepping up. Um, so you cut him, you save some money, and the Ram, Rams' future contracts are looking pretty rough. You know, they don't have, they may have more cap space than you think this year. Uh, so you could think, well, they can go out and spend, um, but a lot of the money is going to be used in future years. So, uh, you know, they, they actually need the money. You know, you know originally, the, yeah, they have more cap than you think, but then after looking at the cap, um, they can't spend it. Like, they, it's hard for them to spend it. You know, I, some rough con- contracts for the future for the Rams. So they need to, they need to save up, basically what I'm getting to there. Uh, the Dolphins next, Albert Wilson, who I like. He's a weapon. He's been good for them. You know, they didn't use him a whole bunch this past year, though, with the coaching changes. He's definitely a weapon. Nine and a half million is a lot of money for a guy that you're not going to use a whole bunch. Um, so I definitely think they cut him. Uh, and something that just came to my mind right now, you see the the Chiefs, if they have to cut Sammy Watkins, they can bring Albert Wilson back for pretty cheap, I would believe. So uh, that actually makes a lot of sense to me right there. Uh, nine and a half million is a lot to me. I think I again, I like Wilson. I think he's a weapon. I always thought second he came in the league, I thought, always thought this guy was underrated, a playmaker. Um, but nine and a half million, uh, you cut him, you cut him. But I still like the guy, you know. So I, I think that's one that they will definitely do. Uh, the Vikings, I expect them to do this. Uh, they actually have a few. The Vikings are actually in the negative in the cap right now, but they have a few guys I expect them to cut. Um, to get them back up, but the most obvious and must cut is Riley Reef, their left tackle, who's been extremely disappointed. Ex- disappointing. Um, you know where are they worse? They worse at left tackle, left guard, pretty evenly bad. I'd say they're worse actually at left guard. Pat Elfline, though, there's no point to cut Pat Elfline. You save maybe a million, not even that. You keep him on as a rotation or a backup guy, I should say. Uh, Riley Reef, you cut, you save right around nine million. You find your future left tackle. Um, you need that cap space desperately. Um, so to me, uh, that's an absolute no-brainer. You know, there's talk about you know could they cut Rhodes? They, they would save around the same amount of money, maybe like eight million. They did set that contract up pretty well, where they they paid him his money for when he was actually an elite corner, and now you kind of expected him to be at almost as good now, but since he's not, it's not the worst deal because you can cut him, save money. But for some reason, Zimmer still likes Rose, still believes in him, so maybe maybe they'll keep him on. Uh, they have an option with Everson Griffin they can choose to decline uh, and maybe bring back for cheaper. Uh, possibly Linval Joseph, they have a uh, situation with him. Maybe they cut him, even though he's still a heck of a player. Riley Reeves, the obvious one there for the Vikings, find their future left tackle, uh, possibly in the draft. Uh, the Patriots next. Mohamed Sanu, tricky one because they just traded a second round pick for Mohamed Sanu. So this one's going to, it already hurts. It's going to hurt even more. Other than this, they don't really have players that they, they can cut. You know, maybe there's some like the small end players where they're going to save 700000 you know, 750000 whatever the minimum is, uh, 800000 You know, Sanu, they got to help make that run. He didn't produce for them. They didn't really make that run. Uh, he's not a guy that's going to make or break your team. Six and a half million, especially with the long list of free agents you have. A long list of free agents. Six and a half is a lot of money. I, I think you do this. I know it's going to hurt even more because they just traded a second round pick for him. So we'll see if they do it. Uh, New Orleans Saints, obvious, very obvious one uh, that they will definitely do. Um, Smart decision to bring Janoris Jenkins in off waivers. I know a lot of teams were, you know, possibly after him. A few teams were possibly after him. 
Um, it was smart because you barely had to pay the man anything because it was at the end of the year. Um, not you know it, you just hurt your cap a tiny tiny bit for last year, 2019. Now uh, you have the opportunity to cut him and save 11.25. It was basically a rental for low risk, and he kind of helped them. You know, and he played pretty decently. Uh, maybe they want to restructure his contract. They actually want to keep him around. You want to keep him cheaper, whatever that may be. They're not going to pay the man 11.25 million. They will cut him. Um, you know that it's it was the second they signed him before they signed him when they had the idea or not signed him got him off waivers when they had the idea um, of maybe giving getting him off waivers they they already knew that that this was the situation they already knew that um, and when you get a guy off waivers he carries the same contract as what he had with the Giants obviously pretty big number for the guy that was once maybe the best corner in football not so much anymore but can still contribute obviously. Uh, the Giants, speaking of the Giants, are next. Tough one, Alec Ogletree, going to cut him. Um, they traded for him a few years ago. I liked his game a lot. You know, he was he was a solid linebacker. It didn't last long, though. It didn't last long. Uh, they're they're going to go. Gettleman loves his, you know, he, he really values the inside linebackers. He's going to go find the guys of the future. He hasn't really been able to do that yet. You know, they've kind of been in tricky situations. You know, spots in the draft where they're really, it was a way too big of a reach if they would go for, like, the next best inside linebacker. So I can't really blame him too much um, there. I think they'll go for their, their younger ones. You know, they'll go find guys. So And they cut Alec Ogletree. That's kind of a lot of money there, $8.25 million. So that's what they'll do. It kind of brings up the debate on Nate Solder. Um, you know, an aging left tackle, not really the same as he what he used to be. That's why the Patriots let him go. Um, do they cut him? They would save more than $8.25 million, But it's so hard to find those tackles, uh, and they need a right tackle as it is. But they do, they are in the driver's seat to get a very good one, whether it's a left tackle, a guy like Mekhi Becton, a guy like Tristan Wirfs, Andrew Thomas, or they get the right tackle, a guy like Jedrick Wills. Um, so they are in the correct spot to do something there, but – you know, they need two tackles, and it's hard to come across, you know, starting caliber tackles. I, I'd keep Solder. I, I, I'd I keep him, Nate Solder. So um, I, I think Ogletree there. The Jets next, Tremaine Johnson. Pretty obvious one. The good news, there's good news and bad news. Uh, you know, we'll start with the bad news. The bad news is they gave Tremaine Johnson way too big of a contract, and with that, you would think, you would think, Cutting him would save a lot more money with that contract, but they kind of already paid him all that. So it only saved $3 million. It's still something. It's very obvious. He doesn't want them. They don't want him. They cut him. They, they go find their younger corners. They don't even use him with their current corners, really. I mean, he gets some snaps, but, um, you know. But then the good news is they don't really have a bunch of bad contracts. You know, there's not a bunch of guys that they like need to cut or they don't have any bad, you know, they don't really have any bad contracts there. Um, you know, yeah, the bad news, they only save $3 million, but yeah, there's good news in there. So they cut Tremaine Johnson. Uh, it's crazy because when they signed him, uh, I knew it was a lot of money and I was a little scared about that amount of money, but he was good. Like Tremaine Johnson was very good. So I kind of, you know, I kind of still believe in the guy. Like if somebody signs him for cheap, I think that's going to be a big time signing, a low risk. Uh, we'll see, because he was when he was on the Rams, he was, I thought, easily a top ten corner that, that last year. So very interesting one in free agency. If if he is cut, you know, I'd be surprised to keep him around. Uh, you know, maybe they maybe they trade him for. You know, I think they would have already done that by now. But maybe they trade him for a very late late pick. Um, we'll see. Raiders, good news for the Raiders. They don't really have any must cuts. You know, they're just not a major one. Derek Carrier, they no longer need him. Um, you know, I mean, they can find a better rotation tight end behind Waller. 1.85, it's something. It's not like they need it. Um, you know, it, it's just the good news, they don't have a bunch of guys to cut. The bad news is uh, I didn't like it at the time, and I still don't like it. I don't like that Tyrell Williams contract. Um, you know, either they overspent. You know, I never was a huge fan of him. He has a drop problem. Um, but, and it kind of makes it worse, too, when you spend, I like, just recently spend big money. And he, he's a solid receiver. Don't get me wrong. I just don't like the contract. He's a solid receiver. Not a huge fan of his play, but solid. Uh, and he can help your team. Uh, but you spent all that money last year and going into a top-tier receiver class where you can fill out those receivers you know, in the draft class and, and be a lot cheaper at the same time. So that's really the only bad thing. Um, you know about their cap situation, maybe, maybe Tyrell Williams, uh, but really overall good good situation here. You don't have any must cuts. Um, you know, you're not going to save a bunch of money by cutting, but you don't really need to. Eagles is a strange one um, because they don't have kind of like when I talked about the Raiders. The Raiders, it's good news. They don't really have any bad contracts, good cuts. The Eagles don't have any like big time cuts they must make, but but it's kind of bad because 
to me, they they have must cuts that they need to make, but they can't because, well, I know some Eagles fans will disagree. You know, I always love Elshon Jeffrey, uh, but he's not the same anymore. He's really lost a step. He's getting hurt, and he has a uh, he has a bad contract. It's a bad contract. If you it, maybe they wouldn't be considering cut him, but if they cut him, they actually lose cap. They go negative. So you can't do that, and they have to pay him a lot of money. Uh, and then looking at Deshaun Jackson, great career. He's lost a step. He just cannot stay healthy. You cut him, you lose cap. You lose money. You go negative. Uh, so there's players like that um, where I would actually cut. I would cut like a guy like Deshaun Jackson. It would be tough to cut a guy like Jeffrey, but you really can't. Uh, so obviously LeBlanc's a solid rotation guy and a solid special teamer. Um, you know, I think they're going to bring in new corners. They don't like their current corner. I mean, they like a guy like Darby, but um, you know he continues to get hurt as well. Uh, every year it feels like so I mean cut LeBlanc you know because you're not going to keep a million corners anyways you know you cut him you, you bring in some guys with got with the guys they have like Darby Cindy Jones you know um, Rasul Douglas you know they could cut Douglas but it's going to save less than this um, you know so it's obviously not a must cut I don't like the way they structured it you know I kind of thought that when they were kind of dishing out big contracts you know they it felt like they're kind of in the business of paying guys for winning that one Super Bowl um, the way they, you know, Howie Roseman, I mean, he can find some talent. Don't get me wrong. He cannot structure contracts. And I actually learned that while making this video, kind of going through everyone's cap situation and what the contracts look like. They have a decent amount of cap this year, kind of like the Rams. Uh, but going forward, you know, so the way some of those contracts are structured, pretty brutal. So, um, but they're good at finding young talent that'll be cheap. So that, that's kind of the good thing. And they kind of get back to where they were very easily, very easily. So that's, that's the great news there. Um, Steelers, Anthony Chiquillo, uh, save 5 million, obvious one. He's a rotation guy, not going to make or break your team. You save 5 million. You kind of could, uh, look at their line inside linebackers. You got Mark Barron, Vince Williams, you know, um, you know, battling for that spot next to, uh, Devin Bush, obviously their, their feature linebacker now great draft pick last year. Um, you know, which one do you keep? You can keep one, cut one there as well. You'll save some money. Uh, you know, I mean, take your pick there, but this is the obvious one, you know, a backup, you know, outside linebacker, not gonna make or break your team, not super impactful. Five million sounds pretty good to me. You know, they gotta sign, re-sign guys like Bud Dupree if they want to. He had a breakout year, uh, and um, other needs obviously, but not a whole bunch of huge ones. So I thought that was a pretty obvious one. I expect them to do. Seattle Seahawks next. Uh, good news is they don't have any major ones. Um, you know, they'll cut Ed Dixon, I think, you know, veteran tight end, they no longer need, they may look for, you know, they like Will Disley keeps getting hurt. They may look for another young tight end or maybe sign one free agency. They have cap space. They do need to sign some of their own guys back. Look at Quentin Jefferson, uh, Jaron Reed, Jadavion Clowney, you know, they have the cap space though. So I'm not worried. Ed Dixon, you cut him, you don't know, no longer need his services. You save 3 million. Pretty obvious. San Francisco 49ers, you cut Solomon Thomas, uh, has not really lived up to the hype. That's pretty obvious. Um, uh, you know, a guy, pre-draft process, I got ripped for being way lower on him than everyone else, uh, and I still think I was too high on him. Uh, but everyone else had him like top five. I had him down 15 to 20 range. Uh, but but I actually liked him as a 3-4 defensive end. He did not go to a 3-4 team. I'm hoping... Niners cut him, a 3-4 team signs him, puts him at end. He's got some upside. But, you know, why did the Niners cut him to save 4.5? It's on a whole bunch of money, and, you know, you still kind of got to believe in the guy. You know, people are kind of stuck to him just because he was a high draft pick. Um, but the Niners, yeah, they, they could use some more cap space. They got, like, guys like Jimmy Ward, free agent, you know, a couple free agents they need to sign. Uh, a team that's built to come back to the Super Bowl, but like I mentioned, you don't want to go in a season with the same exact team. You know, you want to bring in some other guys here. And they want to bring guys like Jimmy Ward back. You know, they may need another corner, another safety, um, you know, more offensive line. So uh, they cut Solomon Thomas. You know, he's not going to make the break, make or break their team as well. You know, four and a half million for them, for the Niners, where they're at. You know, that's kind of a lot of money there. Tampa's next. William Golston, uh, very obvious one. You no longer need him. Uh, they have more, you know, and they need to resign their pass rushers as well. They need to resign. Well, and, and they got Dominican Sue on um, on the defensive line. Maybe they want to bring him back for another year. But they have Shaq Barrett, Jason Pierre-Paul, both free agents who are stud outside linebackers in their three four for them. Um, so you and they have a lot of cap, but and they have the quarterback situation, running back situation. You might need a right tackle. So they got to resign some guys. They want to find some new guys. They have some holes to make them uh, be able to, to to fill so they can compete, make the playoffs because they're a talented team. Um, you know, so you cut this guy, you save four point seven five million. Pretty obvious there. Uh, Tennessee Titans, a tricky one as well. I went Deion Lewis, you save $4 million. 
uh, maybe just a little bit north of that. Um, and I mean, you could go with guy. It's tricky because you could you look at Delaney Walker, who's a big time tight end for them. You save a little more. You save around six million cutting him. Um, but I still think they believe in Walker. He just can't stay healthy, and they like Johnny Smith a lot. But you still, you know, it's a, it's an offense that needs multiple tight ends. They do have Ferkser as well, so you know they very well could cut. Delaney Walker and save a little more money and then you got a guy like Cameron Wake where they set up his contract where they can cut him after the one year uh, you know to save, save some money he got hurt um, but they need pass rush you know they may want to try him again another year it's not like a whopping amount of money uh, Deion Lewis when I look at he has been underwhelming to them you know the backup role to Derrick Henry and they use him quite a bit you know there's situations they really want to use that backup more that um, you know shifty back I guess uh, but he has, he's been a little underwhelming, so what you do here is you cut him, you save $4 million, you pay Derrick Henry the big money, and you go to the draft and, and you take a guy day three that's going to be way less than $4 million, and that fits a little more. You look at, if you want to go early day three, you know maybe a guy like Zach Moss is there. You know, I would like Zach Moss for them. Cam Akers, maybe at the end of day two. Um, if you want to go late day, you know, guys like Keyshawn Vaughn from Vanderbilt, um, you know, you know, guys like that, that you can just bring in and kind of fill that backup role for, for, you know, rotation role for cheaper. So I think, I think they'll do that. I think they'll cut Deion Lewis, uh, who's been a little bit underwhelming. And we got one more, the Redskins, uh, tricky one actually, because Josh Norman, um, who's had a great career, uh, but no longer playing to where where he was. Obviously, he's kind of he's very much on the decline. But it's tricky because they're bringing Ron Rivera, you know, former Panthers coach Josh Norman, formerly of the Carolina Panthers, where he played best. That could be appealing. That could make them want to keep him there. But when twelve point five million is on the line, you got to make the right business decision. And you have to cut him. Maybe you want to restructure, but towards the end of the year, they weren't really. I know it's a different coaching staff in there, but they weren't really playing him either. I expect them to be cut. I think there is a slight chance for maybe a uh, either restructure or cut, bring him back for a lot cheaper. Um, that's a possibility. But with twelve point five million on the line here, you do it. You know they're in a great position to get some good draft picks in. Um, they don't need to spend big at the pass rush position because they're going to draft Chase Young for next to Montez Sweat. I mean, you can even trade Ryan Kerrigan, um, you know, possibly, but still playing at a pretty high level and, um, you know, good to have a rotation. Uh, but so you can use free agency to kind of fill out the secondary, uh, fill out the the rest of the offensive line. They need to bring Brandon Scherf back uh, and they need more receivers. I'd save the receiver for the draft, you know, fill that need at the draft. So they're in a pretty good situation to have a decent amount of cap, uh, fill all those other needs, get your guy Brandon Scherf back and then go. Uh, receiver in the draft there uh, you know and people may bring up a guy like Alex Smith if you cut him you actually lose cap going in the negative uh, so that would be a guy that you would want to trade I don't see a ch- I don't see anybody trading for him just yet so tough situation there tough situation uh, but you don't really you still don't really blame him for going out getting Alex Smith because I think he was a pretty pretty darn good quarterback so it's not really one where it was just a bad move it was just it's, it sucks it's a suck it's a it's, it's a bad situation but it's unfortunate uh, but that's going to do it. Went over a lot of teams there. We'll have a lot of these types of videos going forward in the offseason. In the offseason, very near future, each team will have their own video with my full full breakdown of what they should do on the offseason. So a lot will be in that. It'll be very fun. So I'm like very excited for that. And we'll have full NFL draft coverage as well. So hopefully you can subscribe to both channels. Hopefully you can follow us on Twitter. All that is, a, is in the description and the comments. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.